Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at how cannabis capital raises are down 70% year over year, looking at the Viridian Cannabis Deal Tracker. So transactional activity ending August 7th saw 58% lower dollar volume, but over two and a half times as many transactions versus the previous week of the year and a sharply lower dollar volume and number of transactions versus the pre- prior year period. So it was recorded with eight capital raise transactions totaling 20 million versus 10 transactions totaling 281 million during the same week last year. The average tranche size of each deal is two and a half million this week versus 28 million in the prior week last year. Although last year's totals were skewed by $143 million IPO from Sundial Growers. The largest capital raise occurred on August 6th with FSD Pharma, which is focused on developing an FDA-approved synthetic compound targeting the endocannabinoid system. They closed a $10 million registered direct offering of 2.7 million units at a $3.60 per unit price tag. Looking at public versus private cap raises, all eight of this week's capital raises, they were closed by a public company. So far in 2020, public companies have accounted for 81% of all capital raises versus 67% for the same period last year. In 2020, public companies have accounted for 88% of total dollars raised versus 71% for the same period in 2019. Cannabis stock prices continued to perform strongly and Viridian deal tracker data also shows a clear relationship between these cannabis stock prices and capital raise and M&A activity. The capital markets are gaining confidence in the cannabis industry based on its demonstrated resilience in the face of a weak economy and on renewed hopes of positive legislative developments following the upcoming national election. So of the eight public company capital raises, all are listed in Canada and seven of the eight are also listed in the U.S. Looking at equity versus debt capital raises, equity capital raises accounted for seven of the eight transactions and 75% of the proceeds raised. With FSD Pharma's $10 million equity raise representing nearly 50% of the financing for the week. The largest debt raise, it went uh, for $4.9 million. It was an issuance of an 8% senior secured convertible debenture with a warrant issued by Canada House Wellness Group. And cap raise by sector, the eight capital raises this week were spread across four different industry sectors with three in biopharma, two in cultivation and retail one in agricultural technology and one in infused products and extracts. Biopharma equity capital raises were accelerating with 19 issues, totaling 96 million for the first half of this year compared to only 12 issues at 78 million for the same period in 2019. All right, mergers and acquisition transaction activity. There was four M&A transactions versus zero in the prior year. So of the mergers and acquisitions, there was four M&A transactions versus zero in the prior year period. Though M&A activity is still far below the level seen in 2019, we can continue to see a pickup in activity, likely driven by the continued increase in stock prices of cannabis companies. The largest M&A transaction occurred on August 4th with MYM Nutraceuticals. They closed an $11.65 million acquisition of Highland Growth. It's a licensed cultivator processor. Looking at public versus private M&As, all of the week's acquisitions were made by public companies. It's been the case of 94% of M&A transactions closed this year. Public companies, particularly with the recovery in stock prices and fundraising ability, have been the dominant acquirers in the cannabis industry. All of the acquired companies were private, and private companies remain the dominant targets for acquirers, except for the growing number of sale leaseback transactions, many of which have been done by large public multi-state operators. Buyers came from three different sectors. That's cultivation and retail, investment, M&A, and infused products and extracts. I anticipate to see more public companies gobbling up private companies as they're done or almost done seemingly buying their stock back at all-time highs. Now there's nothing else to buy. So stupid money or stupid valuations will come out in the second half of 2020, if not 2021, when there won't be anything else to buy and therefore you'll have stupid valuations. So you know, a company that wants to buy some intellectual property from another company can just put a billion dollar price tag by buying that company for a billion. So it doesn't work that easily, but it's essentially we are going to see uh, stupid valuations coming out a little bit later this year. And a lot of these public companies are going to start really gobbling up that the private companies that have relatively decent valuations by compared to the, uh, you know, Canadian marketplace or the U.S. where 
the speculation has driven these valuations to uh, ridiculous levels. So expect massive buyout numbers next year, crazy M&A valuations, stupid money is going to be coming out. You heard it here first. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.